Oke. Okay. <coughs> Assalamualaikum. So today I will cover on risk and return. So this is this first video I will only cover on single asset. How we want to calculate expected return and standard deviation for single asset. Referring to page 9182 uh, in your textbook example 7.1. The investor have been uh, have been given two options. Shares A and share B. Okay, now based on this calculation, you have to calculate you have to calculate expected return for share A and share B. The formula for expected return for single asset is probability times with return. Remember, in your question, your return is be in percentage, correct? Negative 10%, 15%, 20%. When you want to calculate, please don't change it to be decimal. Maintain with the percentage. So when you want to calculate example, 0 0.05 times negative 10. So you don't need to change to be 0 0.1, 0 0.15, no. You just take the number. Clear? Now, in your textbook, as you can see, the calculation is like this. 0 0.05 times with negative 10, correct? Plus 0 0.25 times with 15 plus 0 0.3 times 20, 20 and so on. But my suggestion is to avoid any careless mistake using the mathematical formulation. So I transform this formula. I use table. Okay. So, but if you want to construct table, you have to construct based on the securities. A is for A. B is for B. So I okay. First column, P, probability. Second column, which is the return for share A. Then the formula asks you to do what? P times R, right? So zero point zero five. You will time with ne negative ten. Remember, when you want to calculate using your calculator, later, remember. 0 0.05 you have to times and you have to put bracket negative 10. Don't forget the bracket in the calculator. Clear? Okay, now I times 0 0.05 with negative 10. 0 0.25 I will time with 15. 0 0.3 I will time with 20 and so on. Then the formula asks you to do what then? Total, right? Then you sum everything, then you will get expected return for A. That means if you invest in your share A, your expected return that you can earn is 19.5%. Is it more easier compared to use the mathematical formulation? Yes, better use table to avoid careless mistakes. Clear? That is for A. Should you do for share B also? Yes. yes. Do you see? Now, I construct for share B. But, is it a return is the same as A? No. no. So, this return, you have to follow the question. They will give you the question. In the question. Okay, now, what you have to do now? How to calculate expected return? P times with R. After you times all for each level of probability, then you have to? Sum total, then you will get 20.65. Are you clear? Yes. That is for expected return. Clear? Yes. Now, remember, expected return, make sure the answer is correct. Why? When you want to calculate, you see this? Standard deviation. In the formula, you have to do what? You have to put a expected return. So if your expected return is wrong from the first step, is it wrong in your SD later? Yes. yes. Remember that the deviation is to calculate to measure what? It's one of the way to measure risk. Okay, now the formula is quite long, correct? 
So how I do that, I construct this formula to be in a table form. First, we start with what? First column, P. Then, R. Then, expected return. Alright, now, do you see this A, B, C, D, E, F? Yes. Why I name the column? Because easy for you to memorize the column table when you exam later. So, column A is for what? Probability. Column B? Return. Column C? Expected return. You write back your PR, your expected return for A just now. How much you get? 19.5. Don't do any careless mistake. You are doing for share A, so you have to take expected return for share A. So you will enter 19.5 for each column. Sorry, for each row. 19.5. Next, column D. How do you want to get the answer for column D? Column B minus column C. It indicates what? Actually, you are, you are telling to, uh, the table return minus expected return. You see? Return minus expected return. So, negative 10 minus 19.5. 15 minus 19.5. Don't forget what just now. Negative 10 minus in the bracket 19.5. Alright, then you get the answer. Then the, the formula asks you to do what? Square. Square. Correct? Power of 2, right? So now, if you do like this, negative 29.5, then you power of 2, you will get negative answer. Don't forget, in the calculator, bracket first. In the bracket, negative 29.5, power of 2. Then you will get positive. Correct? Yes. Don't forget to put bracket. Now, why I power of 2 class? Because the formula is there. Correct? Now, column E, how to get the answer for E? The answer that you get from D, power of 2. Certain students, they do careless mistake. They do like this. 29.5 times 2. It's not times 2. It is Yes, to the power of 2. After you get the answer, you have to sum first or you have to times your P first? Times your probability. So to get the F column, answer in A column, times with E. So 0 0.05, you will time with A. Actually, you are following the formula. P times with what? R minus exoteric return power of 2. It's the same actually, but I do it in the way of table. So when I times A times column E, you will get the answer and the, the formula asks you to do what now? Sum, sum. sum everything, then you will get total. However, the total is not standard deviation. The total actually variance. The symbol for variance is this, power of 2. Then what you have to do? To change it to be standard deviation, you square root it and then you will get 8.05. That is for share A or share B? Share A. Is it enough or you have to do for share B now? You also have to do for share B the same step. Example, you see? For share B, column A, column B, but B is different. Why? You are using share B return. And is it the same that expected return with your first table just now in share A? Why? From where I get this expected return for share B? Remember just now you calculate 20.65 for share B. That figure that you will put in your column C. As I said, the important column for this chapter is column D. Just now, share A, column D is important. For share B, column D also is important. Do you see this D? Because column D will be used in portfolio later, in my second video. The answer in column D will be used in the next step. So make sure your column D, the answer is correct. 
and the way the step that you follow must be correct as well. So what you have to do now? 0 0.95 power of 2 or bracket? Don't forget to put in the bracket form in your calculator. Then after that, after you get your column E, what you have to do? Alright, R minus ER and then power of 2 and then times with your P based on the formula. Then we get the answer. Do it for the each row. Alright, and then you have to sum. Is this the answer? No. That is right. Very well. So you have to put square root, then you get 15.27 risk. Clear. That is for portfolio or single asset? Single asset. You are imagine, you have to imagine that you have 200,000 in your hand. So you have option. Either you want to invest in share A only, the 200,000, or you want to take this 200,000 to invest in share B, or you can make portfolio. Maybe this from this 200,000, you can invest both portfolio. So that's why you have to calculate this expected return and standard deviation first. But remember, although you have calculated standard deviation and expected return, the decision making, we have another step. I will cover in my third video. Okay, so the first video I only cover how to calculate what? Expected return and standard deviation for single, single asset. A for A, B for B. If the question gives you three types of asset, what do you have to do? You have to construct three tables for these three. But through my experience, I just want to share to you all, most of the certain students, their mistake is on column C as well. They always put expected return this figure. This is wrong. This is return. Expected return come from where? From the first calculation just now. So all will be the same figure. Clear? So I will cover portfolio in my second video. Alright, thank you.